right now is to just think. I'm asking you to think, think. about something uh -huh. the Lord has done for you. Yes. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Beautiful voice. 
And one day, before I preach or teach, she's going to come up and just sing for the Lord. Right. And guess what? I'll be so happy and so will God. Right. Right. Well. So I won't be before you long, but there is a word from the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. First, before I get started, who's on the prayer line with Mother Paige? Is there someone here on the prayer line with Mother Paige? Because they told me that um, they were a member of this church and that I was supposed to come. So I don't know. But uh, give her my regards if you find out, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Now, before we get started, you know it's Black History Month. All right. Right? Yes. And I'd just like to to talk a little bit about black history before I get started into the Word of God. Because right. I have some young people here. Right. And guess what? If we don't know our past, we don't know our future, okay? I um, was planning on talking about faith, and you know, when Elder Brown called me to say, come and speak, I got so excited, pulled out all my books from every, every college there is, and, because this is Church of God in Christ. Oh my goodness, I'm about to call Dr. Howe. Dr. Howe, you better be praying for me. Amen. But the Lord did not give me anything until about 3.30 this morning. Right. I thank him. I thank him for that. I thank him for that. I usually, around this time, as Dr. Faulkner mentioned, there's a lot going on. I often mention I feel like Job because of situations happening. I've been getting calls, maybe two, three people a week passing away. Oh, and um, it, it's very, and not only me, I, I'm sure others, those of you have been experiencing some of this as well. But we have to continue to stay focused on God Amen. and have faith in Amen. Him. Right. And we have people like Martin Luther King ML. We have people like Rosa Parks, Amen. W. E. Du Bois, Lola B. McGee, who is my grandmother, who picked 500 pounds of cotton with her son in one day. And I can't leave her out of that history because that is a lot of cotton. And you know how light and fluffy cotton is, right? So to pick 500 pounds. So if she is someone worthy to mention among the historians throughout Black History Month. Amen. So the Lord gave me this morning, after bringing out all the books and putting on my, 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 tried to put on my scholar thing, and then it even got so bad, Pastor, I think I was gonna pull out the door to see if I had all these things, that these degrees, I, you know, but the Lord wasn't giving me anything. But he did, and he said to me, acknowledge your gift. That's what he said to me. But let's go to the word of God first and pray, okay? Thank God for these. Musicians here, they're doing a beautiful job. And I thank God for each and every one of you. And as my mother used to say, my godmother used to say, everyone breathing in the house of the Lord. Amen. All right, I'll be coming from Ephesians chapter 3. Uh chapter 4. Amen. Thank you. I therefore, and if you can, for those who can, will you please stand in reverence to the word of God. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of your vocation wherewith ye are called 
with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, enduring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all, and in you all. But unto every one of us is giving grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descend first unto the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might feel all things. And he gave some apostles, we got plenty of them today, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers, for the preaching of the saints, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, and carry about with every wind of doctrine, of the slight of men, and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, that love will get it every time, yes. may grow up unto into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. You may be seated. Amen. Heavenly Father, we adore you. We magnify your holy and righteous name. Yes, yes. And we said thank you, Father. Thank you. We thank you for who you are, Father God. We thank you for this word, Father God. We ask that you move self out of the way, move Brenda out of the way, so your word can go forth. Father God, I want you to know we love you, Lord. Love you, Lord. And we're excited, hallelujah, we're excited to see what you're going to do in all of this. Because it's not about me, it's all about you. We love you, we adore you. Put me at the foot of the in Jesus' name, amen. My subject for this afternoon is acknowledge your gift. And if you look at Romans, 1129. I just want to share that particular scripture with you. Romans 11, chapter 29. And it reads as thus. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Alright? So that means that we can all have gifts. I know one thing, if you don't use your gift, what you don't use, you lose. Right. You lose. Right. And sometimes there are consequences behind 
what God, you're not doing what God has given you to do. But my point in all of this is, are we having faith in God in using those gifts? Or are we still trying to do stuff in our own strength? See, when we do it in our own strength, we make a mess. But when Jesus died on the cross, he told his disciples that he was leaving a comforter for us, a teacher for us. And it's not an it, it's a person living inside of us, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, amen. In all of our ways, we must acknowledge him so that he can direct our path. Uh -huh. We must have faith in God. Turn to someone and say, we have to have faith in God. Uh -huh. we, we heard about the apostles and the teachers and the evangelists, but the one gift that we have to acknowledge uh -huh. is the gift of God. All right. And they are righteousness, uh -huh. which is a key to salvation. Uh -huh. And salvation saves us from the penalty of sin. All right. Amen? All right. Amen? All right. Saves us from the penalty of sin. Uh -huh. And you know what? God cannot look upon sin. Amen. And that leads to eternal life, uh -huh. which is the result of salvation. Right. So we're worried about this gift. We're worried about that gift. But worry about the gift that God has for us. Uh -huh. We're always talking about that gift of salvation. Mm -hmm. But before that, there's a gift of righteousness. Yeah. You receive the gift of salvation. You receive that. That is a gift from God. God. Righteousness is a gift from God as well. Right. An eternal life his son dead and died on the cross for us for me for you and thank God he's not a respecter of persons because what he does for me how he blesses me he's going to bless you as a child of God for the gifts of calling of God are without repentance for by grace we are saved through faith. Not by what we do or how we do it or how many letters we got behind our name or how many schools we went to. Amen. It's by faith. It's by faith. How much money we have, what kind of car we drive, how many houses we have. It's by faith. And a lot of times we have a void in us uh -huh. that we try to fill with drugs, with food, right. with women, with men, right. with relationship, even with church. Uh -oh. And the only one that can fill that void uh -huh. is Jesus. Turn to someone and say, Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. How much we feel or look like we have it together. You know, we always want to think we got it together. Uh, we got something. I've got this. Uh, Is that what the kids say? I've got this. But by his grace, it's only by his grace uh, are we saved through faith. And it doesn't matter how hard, how many times we watch John Stanley, how many times. We watch T.D. Jakes or Joyce Myers. How many times we're, we're doing the virtual service? It is something, but he wants to sup with us. He wants a deep, personal, intimate relationship with us. And he wants it daily. He wants you to stop making him 
your weekend boo. Yeah. Or your Sunday boo. Yeah, yeah. He wants a relationship with you. Amen. And if you look at the uh, definition of faith, and I'm flipping back and forth because my, my, my uh, sermon was on faith because we need faith. We need to stop looking at television and look at the Word of God and see what the Word of God is saying to us. Mm -hmm. You know, Fauci is saying one thing, but Jesus Christ is saying All something right. else. Amen. Amen. Faith is a reliance on Him, a dependence on Him. And that Him is God. And the woman at the issue with the issue of blood for 12 years, she knew to go to him. H-I-N to touch his H-E-N. He wants to sit and sup. <laughs> sit in his lap. lap. Sit at his feet like Mary did. You know, Martha was in there busy. Yeah. And you know, Martha, Jesus was the friend of Mary, Martha, and Nazareth. Uh -huh. So, you know, Martha said, Jesus, tell Mary to come in here and help me. And what did Jesus say to Martha? That Mary has chosen that good part. How many of us today has chosen that good part? Hallelujah. Yeah. Stop the busyness. Being busy is being under Satan's yoke. Stop the busyness. Sit at his feet. Amen. Give him 20, give him 15 minutes. It doesn't have to be a half hour. Give him 15 minutes daily and see how your life changes. Is he worth 15 minutes? Yeah. All that he's done for us, waking us up this morning in our right mind with the activity of our lives, is he worth 15 minutes? Amen. Turn off the TV. I thought I had that. I watched Charles Stanley three times on Sunday. Mm. Joyce Myers, if I can catch her. T.D. Jakes, if it's not a repeat, because everything's a repeat, repeat for T.D. Jakes now. And the Lord whispered in my spirit and said, can I get two of the Charles Stanley shows? Right. Can you stop watching two of them and give me some time? Right. Yeah. Turn off the technology. Amen. And you know what, TV, technology, who sprints up the airwaves? Mm -hmm. Satan, who sprints up the airwaves? I don't care if I'm watching Touch by an Angel, Charles Stanley. Uh -huh. Satan is Prince of the Airways. Right. We have to spend time with God at his feet. Amen. All right. All right. Be with him who sent his son, who died on a cross for us, and God sent his son who died for our sins. Amen. Uh -huh. And what I like about that story, all that God, all that Jesus had gone through, uh -huh. the whipping, the pouring, pour, pulling out of the beard, right. the spit. Now, see, when you spit in my face, that's a fight right there. Oh, they spat in his face. Yeah. He carried that heavy cross. Uh -huh. And guess what? When the two thieves were there uh -huh. on each side of him, the two, one of the thieves said, you know, he wanted to be with him in paradise. That's right. Because he had seen the character of Jesus. Uh -huh. He had wanted to be where he is. How many of us that are Christians, we're showing a character that people would want to be with us? Right. Amen. Amen. But you know what he said to him? This day, this day. you will be with me in Paris. He didn't say after you join the usher board. He didn't say after you come be part of the pastor's club or the big hat club. He said this day you will be with me in paradise. 
Before I give you some scriptures, we have to stop doing stuff in our own strength. Brother read the scripture, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And there is a scene in the help. How many of you are familiar with the help? There's a scene in the help where Viola Davis say, and I couldn't think of the woman's name, uh, to Ron Howard's daughter, Ron Howard, little Opie's daughter, Dallas Howard, we're gonna call her. And she says to her, aren't you tired, Missy? Aren't you tired? And I'm saying to you, I'm asking you, aren't you tired? Yes, aren't you tired of doing things in your own strength? He wants us to cast all our cares upon him. Yes. Know why? Because he cares for us. Yes. He is a God that will never leave us nor forsake us. Yes. He will forgive our iniquities yes. and remember our sins no more. Right. And guess what? There's nothing, say nothing, nothing. too hard. Oh. For him. Amen. God bless you.